one who restrains the senses of action but whose mind dwells on sense objects certainly deludes himself and is called a pretender. Purport. There are many pretenders who refuse to work in Krishna consciousness but make a show of meditation while actually dwelling within the mind upon sense enjoyment. Such pretenders may also speak on dry philosophy in order to bluff sophisticated followers, but according to this verse, these are the greatest cheaters. For sense enjoyment, one can act in any capacity of the social order, but if one follows the rules and regulations of his particular status, he can make gradual progress in purifying his existence. But he, makes, he who makes a show of being a yogi while actually searching for the objects of sense gratification must be called the greatest cheater even though he sometimes speaks of philosophy. His knowledge has no value because the effects of such a sinful man's knowledge are taken away by the illusory energy of the Lord. Such a pretender's mind is always impure and therefore his show of yogic meditation has no value whatsoever. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Gyanam Jana Shalakaya Chakshurin Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Sreshtam Manamapi Shatiputra Matra Surupam Rupam Tasya Agrajam Urupurim Maturim Goshtavatim Radha Kundam Girivaramaho Radhika Madhavasha Prapto yasya pratita kripaya shri gurum tam natusmi. Vandeham shri guru shiataf padakamalam shri gurun vaishnavans chashi rupam sagrajatam sahagana raghunatan vitam tam sajiva sadvaitam savadhutam parijana sahitam krishna tetanya deva shri radha krishna padan sahagana lalita shivishaka. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Well, this verse and purport is certainly quite a different uh, presentation than if you get at the normal flowery peace and love so-called spiritual camps. Pretty heavy stuff. Mithyachara it means one who's pretending, he's falsely behaving, means fal behaving as a behaving as a sadhu, but he's not really a sadhu. And then the, the each line of the purport is like more and more condemnatory, which you're not supposed to condemn others in spiritual life, is it? Just love everyone and don't judge anyone. Uh, well, there is judgment going on in the whole universe. There is a law of karma. So you may say, don't judge others, but judgment is going on all the time. The Christians speak of the day of judgment. When is the day of judgment? Today! Every day. They think it will take place at some time later on. It's always just a few years from now. It's been like that for the last 2,000 years. Uh, but it's going on at every moment. Everything we do is monitored. So it is best to know what is right and wrong and to ju if we don't judge then we're animals. Animals have no sense of right and wrong. To some extent, even the animals can be trained. A dog knows that if he poops in the house, he'll have his nose stuck in the poop, so he, he doesn't do it. But an actual sense of right and wrong, there's no, no, no such developed sense in the animals, of the, no philosophical sense. But there, there is what is right and what is wrong, and... Uh, Krishna is teaching us this and we should also know this and apply it in our lives and as our life is affected by others we should also 
see what others are doing and see if it's right or wrong also. That doesn't mean that we take the position of Yamaraj or Krishna. That is not our duty, but we should know what is right and what is wrong. One thing which is minorly wrong, not very seriously wrong, but it's better not to... There's no real need to play around with the mic stand or anything else. You could just concentrate on listening. It's a common thing in classes that people become very interested in their fingernails and all kinds of things. Uh, but it's during the time of class, it's good to listen, to give the mind to listening. Uh, so, yeah, it's Krishna's duty to judge, but we also have to judge to some extent uh, so that we can choose what is right association. We can tell people this is right and this is wrong. This should be done, this should not be done. That is the duty of every responsible person to know what is right and what is wrong according to the uh, dictate of Shastra. Tasma chastram pramanam te. Karya karya me vasito gyatva shastri vidhanoktam karma kartami harhasi. Within this world, while living in this world, one should know according to shastra what is right and what is wrong. One should know what is given in shastra. Because every human being is meant to be responsible. Even the Shudra has supposed to train their children about what is right and what is wrong. At their level, what to speak of the Brahmanas, they're supposed to be highly conversant to know what is right and what is wrong. Uh, this does create some kind of tension, or can create some kind of tension in society if people are always trying to be right, because they do what is right why are there rules to do what is right? Because we have the tendency to do wrong. If there was no tendency to do wrong, we wouldn't need any rules. That's why in Satya Yoga, the Varnashram system is not established very uh, solidly. There's no, there's no need because uh, people, most of the population are Paramahamsas and there's no need for trade <laughs> or any such people. They don't, need, they don't need rules. Anarchy, what is the best system of government? No government, anarchy. But for that you need Paramahamsas. And as, when the majority of the population or even certain section of the population is not Paramahamsa, then we need government and we need rules about what is right and what is wrong. Uh, so yeah, every human being is meant to be responsible. They have to train their children, apart from acting themselves, they have to train others, they have to know what is right and what is wrong. It's an idealistic society, but it creates some tension. Uh, tension that we are, internal tension, it's psychological tension, you could say, that we are supposed to act in a certain way, but we have a tendency to act in another way, there's a saying that a brahmana is a hundred percent brahmana in public, and then within the brahmana's agraha, in the place where they live, then they're more relaxed. And when he's at home, he's a shudra, does whatever he likes. <laughs> well, it may not be. No, no. At home, at home, he's a. At home he's relaxed and then in the forest when no one's there to see him, he's just, he can do whatever he likes. And it used to be said that they would join in tantric rituals in which they just have sex with any, anyone. Uh, well, f male with female, not beyond. And then eating all kinds of things. It's said, well, the Christian missionaries used to say that the Brahmanas would they'd join in the in the tantric rituals, they'd be very strict brahmanas, but then secretly they join the tantric rituals and they have sex with shudranis and widows and all kinds of things in the name of tantra. Uh, so, so that point is there that in our Krishna conscious movement also we're living to an ideal, but there is 
the tendency to do wrong. We have bad habits. We are trained badly, or rather, we're not. We're hardly trained trained in anything. Uh, we have uh, so many revelations coming out in the Catholic Church about pedophile priests. Why is that? Because they had an ideal of celibacy, but they didn't have the rasavajang rasopiasya parangdrishtva nivartate. They didn't have the higher taste of spiritual life. They didn't. They weren't actually experiencing any bliss in spiritual life. So even though they had an ideal to pursue, that presumably most of the people who became Catholic priests were idealistic to some extent, although they didn't have the knowledge that Srila Prabhupada so kindly gave us. But uh, hopefully, most of them, they wanted to be good, they wanted to do something, uh, serve Jesus, but then their lower tendencies pulled them down to... They, they wanted sex and having no outlet legally or within, within the bounds of their calling, of their vocation, then they exploited children and it's on a wide scale. Recently it ca came out in the news also in uh, Ireland, which until recently was ultra-Catholic and is now going through a a national catharsis of anti-Catholicism. Uh, it was discovered that, that at a, an orphanage home, that the bones of hundreds of children, means the abandoned the women or girls having children without being married, and then they take the kids to this orphanage home, and then they're just... I don't know what they did with them, but they ended up as baby skeletons. Hundreds of them were discovered recently. So what was going on here? That the girls were uh, good Catholics, but not all the time. And it only takes one time. It doesn't happen every time, but it only takes one time of not being a good Catholic to uh, get pregnant. And But you still want to be a good Catholic, especially because if you have a child out of wedlock previously in all over the Western world, you would just be a, a social outcast forever. Uh, no one would marry you. That was there in India also. They have a solution to that now. It's called the abortion clinic. Uh, it's a horrible solution. But I'm not talking about that in particular. I'm just saying that people have... There are rules which we should follow, but there are desires also to break the rule. Uh, and so, having rules, it almost guarantees that there will be hypocrisy. Someone's going to not follow the rule. Well, as Srila Prabhupada notes here in this purport, then we should follow the Varnashram system. He, he, Srila Prabhupada writes here, for sense enjoyment one can act in any capacity of the social order, but if one follows the rules uh, of, and regulations of his particular particular status, he can make gradual progress in purifying his existence. So this is very scientific, as Srila Prabhupada would say. Srila Prabhupada's use of the word scientific in the sense that it's uh, not, not in the sense of uh, Bunsen burners and human genome project and all that kind of thing, but in the sense of uh, it being uh, very practical, there's a system that works that people should be engaged, uh, situated according to their particular psychophysical tendency. 
so that uh, in the Orthodox Church and in the Protestant churches, the priests are married. It's it's practically a uh, I don't know if it's compulsory, but by their rule, but it is um, at least socially it is required. And they have monks also who are not married and nuns um, in the Catholic Church. They have in the Orthodox Church nuns also. Yeah. So. Um, the monks and nuns, they have, many of them, they have, they have very strict life, and the priests, they have more of a social role. So th they, don't, they don't have a pedophile problem, at least it hasn't come out yet, if there is one, in the Protestant church. Because they probably don't have, to the same extent as the Catholic church does, because they have an outlet for their sexual desire. It's recognized the sexual desire is there. So let there be an outlet for it. In, in the Varnashram system, uh, it is expected that everyone marries. There are exceptions, uh, but not many. Shankaracharya took sannyasa at the age of eight, but that's not the norm. The norm is sannyasa is there at the end of life, normally. Uh, there are monks, there isn't the, the, the system of having monks, uh, many such monks, it's, it's not there that young men should be monks or young women should be nuns. It's, it's recognized that there are certain desires that people have and uh, most people they need to uh, go through those desires. We see in the, the story of Yayati when he had to uh, exchange his youth, he was, then that was his son. Who was that? Puru was it? Who took the took the youth? Uh, and Yadu refused, the forefather of Krishna. He's, but the others refused. But Yadu refused on the grounds that I, human life is meant for self-realization. I have certain desires which I need to work through. So. Um, These desires are there, and being raised in the modern world, we have, apart from gross sexual desires, which can be or should be channeled into raising children for the sake of dharma, for the sake of Krishna, uh, Modern society inculcates in us so many other desires. For instance, to be a rock star or a, uh, have a big motorcycle. We were just talking about it. Have a big motorcycle and go roaring around the Croatian countryside, which we find every summer. Mostly Germans, is it? Italians, maybe. They come and roaring around on their motorbikes before they go back to their factories and offices. So the people are playing out their f fantasies. Or, of, or, uh, and they have all kinds of things. Now on the, on the internet and with computer games, you can indulge in all kinds of fantasies. Playing games that you are in some medieval war or some intergalactic war and you can play out your fantasies. But devotees aren't meant for that. Devotees are meant for Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam and all the other rules they are they, they come uh, they, these, but these three are the hearing about Krishna, chanting about Krishna Remembering Krishna. These are the principles. So devotees aren't meant for computer games or uh, becoming a uh, celebrity or a rock star or any such things. But the desire may be there. Or 
the gross sexual desire, that also is supposed to be regulated in family life, but in the modern world, it's, there's increasingly there's no such idea. This morning as we were walking myself and Hanuman Prabhu near to his residence, which is, uh, it's a farming village actually. So we saw in the early morning a group of people going on a tractor with a trailer, obviously going out for farm work, mostly older people. So I commented to Hanuman Prabhu that See, this generation, they don't know anything. These people, they don't know anything about Krishna consciousness. They're, they're, they're meat eaters, they drink alcohol, but then they're not going to get div divorced. And they're probably, they're not the kind of people who are going to cheat you or just some basic morality is there. But with our own devotees, I didn't say that, but that was implied, even though we have such a high ideal, uh, getting married is, is almost like playing roulette with your life and other people's lives also. It's, you just don't know what's going on. It's, it's so unpredictable. Why is that? Even though we have such a high ideal, but we have such high principles, but our devotees are not able to live up to even basic principle. I mean, there's some basic principle that even kamis traditionally, people with no high ideal, but they automatically followed. Why is that? Well, the desires are the, the, the implanted in our minds and it's all around us. The whole society is there. And... Uh, if the mind starts to dwell on that, then one may just fall away. The social system is not there of separation of men and women. Or it's the, even among our devotees, it's, uh, it's not very well established. Uh, so then the mind may start to dwell and think that, uh, well, this, my wife's like this, but this other woman, she's much nicer actually. Or, so the mind starts to think, and then thinking, feeling, willing, and fall down. Or one may be thinking that I'm following all these rules, but actually, the kamis are having so much fun. They go to discos and they go around on motorbikes and they go to movies and uh, why not me too? Why am I why am I locked up in this this uh, rules and regulations? I mean, Krishna's merciful. I I I believe in Krishna. Yeah, I like I like kirtan and I like prasadam. And, I like Krishna consciousness, but we have to be realistic also. What does this realistic mean? If we're realistic, we all have bad desires in our heart. I'm sorry if I'm insulting anyone, and anyone here happens to be a Paramahamsa. But we all have bad desires in our heart, very bad desires. So what should we do? According to modern psychology or Freudian psychology, we should not bottle them up. We should let them go. So many problems. What does he call that? Syndromes? Neurosis? What's that word he says? That we bottle them up. We bottle up the desires and then, then we get all stressed inside and we, we may become angry or we may just indulge in it so better just indulge in it anyway why why uh, why bottle it all up why instead of having rules regulating for instance sex life just 
don't. What's wrong with? Just be natural. Indulge your desires. Then you'll be more relaxed. We also recognize that to some extent. Someone who's a brahmachari, but they're not really fit for that ashram, then get married and live like a gentleman, Srila Prabhupada would say. That's also accepted, but the, but the rules and regulations are still there. If you want to be an animal, then there's no scope for that in Krishna consciousness. Krishna consciousness is meant for human beings. If you want to be an, an animal, just not following any rules, uh, then that's not Krishna consciousness. So we have this uh, dichotomy within, I would guess, within every one of us, that we have a very high ideal, and we have within us so many bad desires. They're not going away very quickly. We have the process of sadhana, we have to follow that carefully, but the dirty things within the heart they may remain for a long time. So what do we do? What do we do about that? Uh, we don't cultivate them. One whose mind dwells on sense objects. The uh, bad tendencies are there, but we shouldn't cultivate them. If we ca From cultivation, then we start to indulge. And then we're on the spiral down, or at least we're not going up anywhere. Recently, um, yeah, there was the World Cup soccer, and uh, I was in America at the time, and a devotee told. Devotee was traveling with. He was always telling me, "This is on Facebook. That's on Facebook. This came. That came." So I said, and, and there's uh, Mataji Hanna here has made a Facebook in my name, which I never saw. I wouldn't even know how to get on. I think you have to have a Facebook account even to get into Facebook. I don't know. Um, so I said, okay, show me, have a look. What's going on there? And then I looked down and I saw there's one uh, entry there. Germany for Portugal nil. Wow, wow. I thought, well, what's that got to do with me? It's a, well, what's it got? Why is why is someone a devotee? Why this? Ah, uh, like millions of people all over the world. I grew up in football culture, and. It go, it, I, I spent every day would play soccer, would go to watch the professional matches. So some interest may be there, but we don't, we don't. If we cultivate that, then we're in Maya. <laughs> we, it's the gross bodily concept of life. Actually, very foolish. But. Obviously, this person who considered themselves to be a devotee thought that that was quite normal to post such a comment on a Facebook account which is supposed to be for Krishna consciousness. Now, there may be others who are have some inclination for that, but they don't discuss it. Because if we start to discuss it, then devotees come together and it's not Machita, Madgata Prana, Bodhayanta Parasparam. Mean, it's not coming together and talking about Krishna. It's coming together and talking about football or in India cricket. And that actually happens. I've seen it. The devotees come together and they discuss about cricket. Now, the tendency may be in the mind to be attracted to that, but why 
cultivate that. If we cultivate it, then we don't go anywhere in Krishna consciousness. We don't advance. We, ha we have to think of Krishna. And although Srila Prabhupada would say, what is the difficulty? The difficulty is that we're not accustomed to thinking of Krishna. We have to cultivate the habit of thinking of Krishna. And for that, there is a process. It is, and, uh, very important in the process is that we have to cultivate those subjects which are favorable for Krishna consciousness. Anukul yasya sankalpa pratikul yasya varjanam. That which is favorable for Krishna consciousness, we have to cultivate. That which is not favorable, we don't cultivate. There are many dirty things in our heart. No doubt. Many attachments. Those of us who have taken to Krishna consciousness after youth or during youth, we already cultivated so many attachments. There may be children who are growing up in Krishna consciousness and they just start to, even though it's not given to them, but they start to cultivate those attachments also. Now, those things are to be given up. Though that interest may be there. How far do we go? We were just discussing now, my, myself and some devotees, about uh, Ukraine, Russia, America, and looks like America, they, they want to give a dog a bad name and hang it. There's a saying in English, you know that saying? You say, this dog is very bad. He did this and that. He didn't, the dog didn't really do it. Because you, the, your aim is to kill the dog. So you say the dog did this, the dog did that, and then everyone gets upset and they hang the dog. So it looks like America is... Russia did this, Russia did that. Okay, it's time to make a war against Russia. Looks like they're heading that way. So we can discuss such things. We're living in the world. Some Vaishnavas, traditional Vaishnavas, they wouldn't discuss such things at all. They wouldn't maybe living in Radha Kund, they wouldn't discuss such things at all. They very strictly only stick to Krishna consciousness and their own internal politics among the... the <laughs> they don't have Russia-America politics, but they have their own internal politics. And some of them may not discuss that also. They'd be horrified to even think of such a thing. But we are living in this world, we're supposed to be preachers and uh, we should be cognizant to some extent, of what's going on within this world. I've several times related. In the 1970s, I was in London, in our temple there, speaking to a guest and who said to me something about Callahan. I said, who? He said, Callahan, Callahan said this or so there. I said, who? He said, the prime minister of this country. I didn't know... I was living in England and uh, a citizen of the UK, but I didn't know the Prime Minister's name. And he thought I was stupid. Um, and in one sense, maybe yes, that we're not concerned with such things. But if we're so unconcerned, then how do we preach to people at all or relate to them? But if we get too much into it, like reading all the political commentaries and 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 then when we meet, we we discuss in great depth about the, uh, the the history of the Ukraine and the mentality of the Ukrainian people and what are the what are the secret objectives of the American government and what the CIA is doing and it's all a Jewish conspiracy. Whoops! It might be, you never know, because if it's a conspiracy, then you don't know about it. So it could be a Jewish conspiracy, it could be a, an uh, aliens from outer space conspiracy also. That's also a possibility, you don't know. It could be, uh, it could be anything. If you, if you don't know what it is, then it theoretically it could be anything. But if you get too much, where's, where's the borderline? Well, for that reason, we have Bhagavad Gita class, in which we... Do. We discuss topics of Krishna. Now, we, we, what, what's this Krishna? We're just talking about our anartis. Well, that's also a topic of Krishna. This is, Krishna is giving this topic. Krishna is discussing this in Bhagavad Gita. So we should discuss such topics 
along the lines of Bhagavad Gita, what Krishna teaches us, not to dwell within the mind extra, as idealists. We're pursuing the ideal of only doing things which, which are related to Krishna, only speaking things which are related to Krishna. But only thinking, no one can see that. So maybe we can get away with some bad things in our mind. And actually, to some extent, we can. In Kali Yoga, one is not penalized for bad thoughts in the mind. Because it's understood that in Kali Yoga, it's so difficult to get free from bad things in the mind that one is not penalized for that. In, in, in other yogas, even to think a bad thought brings a sinful reaction. But in Kali Yoga, no. But that doesn't mean we get a license to have a um, mental madness. That's, that's not a license for that. But it's not, it, it, it doesn't exactly allow it, but it doesn't penalize it. Now in the next verse, yes, Twindriyani Manasa, Niyam Ya Rapater Juna, Kamindriya, Karma Yogam, Asakta Savishishyate. Krishna says, on the other hand, if a sincere person tries to control the active senses by the mind and begins Karma Yoga in Krishna consciousness without attachment, he is by far superior. So Srila Prabhupada in this purport to the Kamindriyani Sangyamya, the verse which we're discussing now, um, he refers to non-Krishna conscious sadhus or, or people who are deliberately bluffing others by making a show of being spiritual but uh, actually not being very spiritual. There are different ways to do that. One way is to um, secretly do your mundane activities the other thing is to call mundane activities spiritual and bluff people in that way. Just like, uh, uh, well, there may be so many things. There was one sannyasi, uh, at least one of his followers, advertised that he wanted to introduce to the great spiritual culture of India surfing as, the, as a spiritual activity. You know who that is? They, that the people of India, they, they can learn from the West about surfing, and this greatly spiritual activity, how you be searching for the perfect wave and becoming one with the wave and all this kind of thing. You have a spiritual experience when you're surfing. Um, sex as spiritual, that's been marketed for generations. That's also part of traditional Indian culture. Uh, it's not Vedic culture, but uh, in Tantra, um, sex is spiritual. I, I, of course, there is in Gita also, Dhamma Avi Rudho Bhute Shu Kamosmi Bharatara Shabha. But uh, grossly, gross sexual activities um, as being something spiritual. So that, that's another way of cheating people, this uh, Osho was became popular popular for that give people a feeling that they're very spiritual and at the same time have uh, illicit sex recently in india i met an elderly man well he came to our center actually and said after all my life i found what i was looking for and he told me he'd spent many years in with osho and i said how could how could you be with that you're a respectable man how could you go with Osho? He said, no, well, I was interested, I was attracted to the intellectual things because he spoke, I don't know what he said, but often when we go in people's houses in India, they have books by Osho, even now. You know, this Osho Rajneesh, he would propagate, have lots of sex and be spiritual. So it seems he was a good word juggler. Prabhupada uses this term, word, word jugglery often uses that term. So, uh, he had some quasi-spiritualism. So this man told me that uh, 
myself and my wife, we are into this, but we never got into that side of it, even though we were pressured to do so. But we, we, I never. But I just like the intellectual side and the meditation and this and that. So they're cheating, just cheating. Um, yeah, and and also you can. Uh, uh, Back to the Catholic Church, you can, or any, eat meat, support, and, and why just the Catholic Church? Practically everyone, in the name of religion, they, they never uh, protest against the slaughterhouse culture. They protest about, against this, right now in the news is the slaughter of Palestinians by Israelis, and, the, uh, and there's so much protest about that all over the world, but the same people are protesting about that. They never think about the uh, slaughter of the animals who they eat every day. So most of what goes on in the name of religion, it's all cheating. Uh, but those who uh, have ideals, are they cheating by having bad thoughts in their mind? No. It, it's not it, what Krishna is talking about here. It's not that having bad thoughts in the mind is bad in itself, but cultivating that, whose mind dwells on that. In other words, um, we have not only to act as devotees, but to really try to work on taking out the anarthas in our hearts. Otherwise, the purpose of human life is not served. Our aim in, in Krishna consciousness, what is our aim? Krishna Prem. If you ask what is our aim, we could say Krishna Prem. We could say to please our Guru, to surrender our life in Srila Prabhupada's service. We could say in various ways. Our one point is the, uh, what is the aim of human life? Uh, for div well, the general aim is there. Labdva sudur labamidang bahu sambhavante manusham artha damanitya mapi hadhira tur nam yatetna pateta nam rinja yavan nishraya seya vishaya kalu sarvatasya. The general aim is that having attained this very rare human form of life, which is very valuable, because only in human life can we understand that there is a name of life and get free from birth and death. So we should act in this human form of life for the highest benefit. Before we die, we should do whatever is required so we don't get born again and not engage in sense gratification which is available in every form of life. So that's the general statement. And the particular statement, Nridehamadyam <laughs> One who got this human form of life, which is like an excellent boat for crossing the terrible ocean of material suffering, and who's got a guru who is like a competent captain for guiding that boat, and who's got the instructions of Krishna, which is like favorable winds for carrying the boat across the ocean, but who yet fails to cross that ocean is committing suicide. It's just like committing suicide, spoiling our opportunity. So we have uh, the great challenge to be Krishna conscious, to become qualified to go back home, back to Godhead. That means purification it has to be intense. It's not going to work by the petrol and water policy. You have a fire, pour in petrol one side, you chant your rounds, and then pour in the water of cultivating material desires. It doesn't work. We have to become free from material desires. Then there's the uh, Prabhupada's mercy program, where you just leave it all to Prabhupada, like, like that Jesus is merciful. Uh, that, well, I won't bother too hard, but anyway, Prabhupada's there. He'll look after me. The Prabhupada looks after us by giving us the instructions by which we can become purified. It's not that just say Jai Prabhupada and then uh, watch the football on TV while eating some potato chips out of a packet. 
which you might remember to offer. Who are you going to offer it to? Prabhupada doesn't need it. So, it's not going to work. Then you, we're setting ourselves up for rebirth. Therefore, it's very good to hear all such things. It's good for us to hear. As long as we have these tendencies to indulge in anything which is not Krishna conscious, it's very good for us to hear how horrible is material life. It's really a fact. But in the, uh, in the creation summer, we may think, well, it's very nice, actually. The world is very nice. Not as this summer. There's been too much rain for us to think that, well, maybe it's not so bad if I come back again. And then sometimes there's, a, there's a, a war that also happened here. How many years ago? More than 20 years ago it finished. 19 years. Be careful if you're walking in the fields around here. There are still mines left over from the war. So, any time any bad thing can happen, we should discuss this. We don't take it seriously, but we should, we should know. Any time anything can happen, you don't want to. You're just walking in the field, chanting your chapter, all of a sudden you lose your leg. It can happen. You don't know. Any time any bad thing can happen. Generally bad things happen, not good things. That's the nature of this material world. So it's, it's educational. This Krishna consciousness movement meant for education. What is that education? The education that Krishna is the highest goal of life. But we also need a good kick up the backside from Maya. Regularly. Regularly. Sometimes we say that. Or someone, they were chanting, they were doing, now they've gone away. Or let them get some kicks from Maya. They'll come back. So it's very, very good to hear this. Because Maya does kick, and especially when we, when we, uh, when a devotee tries to enjoy Maya, Maya says, "Hey, you're not. What are you? What are you doing? What are you doing? You already left me. You're supposed to be with Krishna. Get out of here! Kick, 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 kick." <laughs> she gives more kicks. That's there's a technical term for that. That's called uh, prakshepatmika. Generally, Maya covers everyone, Avaranatmika. Her, her, her Avaranatmika Vritti, she covers the conditioned souls with her illusion. And for those who try to escape, kick them back. Prakshepa means to, to throw back, or it could be kicking back also. So, get. She'll. she'll give you the, the tendency to throw you into Maya. But when she, th when she throws you back into Maya, then it, once, once you come to Krishna consciousness, it's intense because then Maya is trying to pull you back and then she does pull you back, then she kicks and kicks and kicks so you go back again. So be warned before you get into this dangerous cult that your hopes for material enjoyment will be finished. So why bother cultivating them at all? What's the a devotee? Once we've had the taste of Krishna consciousness, we can't enjoy anyway. A devotee can never enjoy like a, he can try, but he knows this is not the real thing. Or if he really thinks it's the real thing, then he becomes a great offender. If someone goes on chanting the holy name and at the same time performing sinful activities and becomes a great offender. And if, he, and if he says that this is all right, this is proper, this is good, this is what we should do, there's nothing wrong with it, be natural, be yourself, he becomes a very great offender by misleading others. And if he becomes a guru on that basis, then he becomes, oh, very dangerous situation. So our mind should not dwell on bad things. Bad things means anything which is not going to bring us to Krishna. This festival is a microcosm of the spiritual world in which we are all here only for the purpose of hearing and chanting about Krishna, associating with devotees, directly cultivating the primary activities 
of Krishna consciousness. So let us take advantage of that. Hare Krishna. I'll finish there. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Shri Sri Gauranitai ki jai. Hare Krishna.